When asked to identify the population parameter sample and statistic, I suggest starting with the sample and statistic and then figuring out what population they come from. So the sample is obviously the 55 random water samples. And the statistic is going to be the average aluminum level in parts per billion for those 55 water samples. So let's jump back and think of the bigger population. The population is all the water suppliers water from which those samples came from. And the parameter is going to be the true mean aluminum level in parts per billion for all the water suppliers water. Let's use the four step solving process. So for state, we want to estimate the true mean aluminum level in parts per billion of all the water suppliers water with 95% confidence. So there's two things in our state step. The parameter of interest, which is the true mean aluminum level, and the confidence level, which is 95%. In the plan step, we need to state our inference method and our conditions. So if conditions are met, we will use a one sample t-interval. That's our inference method. The random condition. This was 55 random water samples, so that's met. Independent. The samples are very small, but technically we're sampling out of a finite amount of water, so we have to check the 10% condition. Since the samples are small and the water supply is large, the 10% condition is met. Normal. With a sample size of 55, it's greater than 30, so the central limit theorem applies. And the sampling distribution of x bar is going to be approximately normal. Now we're ready to construct our interval. So we're going to take x bar, our sample mean, add and subtract t star times the standard error. The standard error is our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So x bar is 540, s sub x is 72, and t star is going to be based on 95% confidence with 54 degrees freedom. To find that, we'll use inverse norm. And here's what we're going to do. Let's start by drawing the t distribution with 54 degrees freedom. It's going to look very similar to the normal distribution. Now, we need to figure out what cuts off the middle 95% of the data. That will give us our critical value. To figure out what this critical value is right here, we need to feed inverse t 0.975. That's because inverse t works by you telling it everything to the left of the cutoff value. If there's 95% area right here, then in the tail, there's 2.5% area. So to the left of this t star is actually 97.5% of the area. You also have to tell it degrees freedom, which is 54. To do this on the calculator, press second, then vars. This is our distribution menu. Go down to inverse t, and for area, put 0.975. For degrees freedom, put 54, which is the sample size of 55 minus 1. After you press paste, press enter again. Here's our critical value, 2.0049 approximately. But you don't have to calculate this interval manually. Press the STAT button and go over to TEST. Near the bottom is the option T-Interval. Now you can either input raw data or stats. We have the summary statistics in this case. So for mean, put 540, which is the sample mean aluminum level we found in our sample. For S sub X, put 72, the sample standard deviation. And for sample size, put 55 you can leave the confidence level at 95. When you press calculate, it will calculate your confidence interval. So 520.54 to 559.46. Now we're ready to conclude. We are 95% confident that the true mean aluminum level of the water supplier's water is between 520.54 and 559.46 parts per billion. Since 600 is beyond this interval, it's reasonable to believe that they're meeting their goal. I hope you liked the video, and if you want to learn more about confidence intervals, check out my confidence interval playlist. It starts with the basic concepts and builds all the way up to videos like this. There's also a video at the end that shows you which type of confidence interval to use for each circumstance.